got the social medias, we got the social medias. You got the Facebooks, we got the Facebooks. You got the Twitters, we got the Tweeters. We got the uh, Instagrams, we don't really use that one too much, but you know, we're on there too. If there's something else, we probably got it. You can find them all in the description at the bottom. Hi, and welcome to Heat Wave. I'm Brian Belcher, and I'm joined with Jerris Mitchell. At the hip. Brittany Saturn. Hey. And Chris, it's the Hutch Hutcherson. At the shoulder. Mm. And uh, uh, it's like a Voltron. Brittany, which part of the Voltron would you be? <sighs> the left nut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you so think like curl up? So the, the left, the left nut is usually the higher one. So the right nut is usually the lower one. It's the useful one. I Are believe. you trying to tell me I'm not useful? Yes. Okay, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> but just, uh, oh yeah. Just stores semen. <laughs> you just store semen, Brittany. Do you know that pee is stored in the balls? <laughs> I used to think that for so fucking long. <laughs> Bodies are dumb. For so fucking long? When did you find well, that hey, out? Not much? that just fucking now. long. I just, now. <laughs> just now. You mean, just now. You mean it's today not? Today I like, learned. <gasps> what? <laughs> huh. Yes, that is a thing that I, as an adult human male with uh, testicles, <laughs> have known this whole time. I feel. I feel like... Uh, we if we were ever to get monetized, we just got demonetized. Yeah. So I, it was really weird as a kid. Like I knew that male animals had balls, but I didn't know that human males had yeah. like testicles. Yeah, I what? don't know what I thought. I thought that it was just just like, a farm just was a, different. Just a penis. You thought they were like it. Ken dolls. I was like, or some surely shit? human males don't have balls that hang down. That's weird. So <laughs> what was what was your first interaction with balls? Were you just like, what the fuck <laughs> is that? Um, I think like when I was in the fourth grade, my mom gave me like she cheaped out on the sex talk and she <laughs> sit me down. She just gave me this like weird book that looked like it was illustrated from the seventies <laughs> and it had all these like creepy little drawings in it. And that's when I like realized like, oh yeah, this is a drawing of like a male body. And I realized that males had testicles hmm. and I was like, huh, that makes sense. Cause like, I don't know. I knew animals did cause I'd seen it. I grew up on a farm, but yeah. like, I don't know. I didn't think that humans had testicles. Uh, that's fair. I mean, our good friend, uh, I'm just going to put Joseph Miller on the spot. Uh, <laughs> Master Joe uh, once thought that all white people uh, pooped white poop. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine because he's, uh, he's a black man and he had uh, brown poop. Or he's a brown man and he had brown poop. So he thought the skin color matched uh, the, uh, the poop. Yeah. Poop. yeah. And I was like, hmm. that's fair. That was my favorite Christmas story he told. <laughs> it was a Christmas story. He told us at a Christmas party. But... And when we tried to watch Die Hard but couldn't. <laughs> that was a great Christmas, actually. That was, yeah, it was. We ended up watching Christmas Claymation, playing board games, and finding out that white people have brown poop. Mm. Yeah. That's a wild intro. We're off to a great start. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, well, you know, let's move on. Uh, Jairus, what are we talking about today? So I've been thinking a lot about... Uh, kind of the weird arms race that's going on in uh, cloud gaming. Okay. Um, so there, there are a couple of different things that are going on. There are uh, companies that you can now buy time on like a virtualized instance. So like a Shadow is a company oh. where you pay $35 a month to get access to a really powerful computer. Is this the same people that just did the like Iowa election no 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 no. it's uh shadow <laughs> te- uh... Uh, <laughs> sorry i just i don't think it there is there was a company who uh fronted the was it like the counting process yeah well that, they well, built that, the app we're kind of like time stamping this recording process but yeah. uh this episode's going out later but in real life like the iowa caucus just happened and fuck that's what we're talking about now i need to figure out Sorry, the relationship just, between these companies because mm-hmm. like Shadow, uh, a Shadow Inc. company was in charge of all the tech behind the app that was the Iowa caucus. So I think I know we're completely segueing right now. Really, no, bad no, no. Now I'm now I'm in a thing. So I only Shadow Tech is Shadow Tech is their website. Okay, but uh, maybe it's a different company. Maybe. I, I don't know if it is, though. It, um, it's a company called Shadow. That's all I know. Yeah. Yeah. What I do know about cloud-based gaming, though, is right now the Google Stadia just came out. Right. And Google... So, like, the the different ways that it's it's kind of working now is that some companies are renting out other people's computers so that okay. you can play whatever game you want. <clears throat> um, Google Stadia is doing that, but with proprietary hardware. Um, 
also Steam Link yeah. is now a thing that exists. So wait a minute, Steam Link is, used to be hardware that you had to link to your other hardware. So now apparently there's a mobile app where okay. you can play a game that is downloaded on your personal PC as long as your personal <clears throat> PC is okay. so connected lot- to the internet and on. So okay. it's essentially the same thing. It's a connection over the internet to another computer. Okay. That is it's handling all of the game. You own. Play. Yeah, so your computer is right. more control. So part of part of the thing, like this is a weird fucking time. Well, Xbox and PlayStation 4 are also working together to build their cloud based uh gaming platform. Right. Which is weird. Yeah. I don't know much about it right now. So, yeah. Um yeah, because Sony Authority has PlayStation now with the Gaikai acquisition that they got, uh-huh. but um, supposedly, I guess for whatever their next iteration of it, or maybe just for future like capacity, they're using Microsoft Edge. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, so I didn't Gek- realize they were using Azure. That's kind of funny. Yeah, was Gek- uh, Gek- Gekai? I always get that one weird. Is that the same company that was on Live at one point? Uh, that was, no, like, the first cloud-based <clears throat> gaming platform. <clears throat> Yeah, that that was a separate. You mean Xbox Live? No, on no. Live. On, on Live was on live, yeah. another gaming console that was completely cloud based. Okay. okay, and it was like, it's like eight years old now. Yeah, and it was not. We weren't ready for it. <laughs> yeah, so 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 that service had some like Tomb Raider games and like some like basic PC games at the time, but it also had um, <coughs> Mist Online. Weird. And it was okay. the only way you could play that game through that. Huh. Uh, okay. No, I'm. I'm uh, there's so many cloud companies, and I like. <clears throat> I legitimately like the idea of cloud-based gaming. Right. I don't think we're there yet. I think we're really close. I I think it depends on the service. So well, that's the thing. So 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 let me. So so last night I tried GeForce Now. That launched. Like, what is GeForce Now? GeForce Now is a um. So it's kind of so, okay. So it's basically like renting um a computer somewhat. Mm-hmm. Um. It relies on you owning the game via right. Steam or what, or through their storefront, <clears throat> and uh, you can add their game to to their launcher. You have you, can, you have two tiers. One's a free tier where you can play for an hour at a time. Okay. Or if you buy their founder um, pack right now, whatever, uh, you can pay play for six hours at a time. Okay. And uh, basically, when you add a game, it launches you into like a remote desktop sort of thing, and yeah. then it brings up the Steam launcher. Mm-hmm. You download the game that instantly and then so yeah i know it's, it's so, so, so weird. you spend an hour playing the game just to get it downloaded and up to speed well, no actually so it's ex- i like, can see you I click download on on that store page and it downloads like instantly. so i guess it's already preloaded or whatever it's mm-hmm. weird um but once you get in there so i, I tried out bioshock infinite mm-hmm. and that shit was super super fast mm-hmm. like okay. i even like gave it like the quick mouse like you know, move around and it didn't skip a beat. No, like, I was, I was, I so are the benefits to this like if you don't have a computer that's up to snuff for gaming, uh, use this service? Yeah. yeah. So to, mm-hmm. okay. So supposedly they're running. But it's thirty five. On... Like some of these are like thirty five dollars a month. Mm-hmm. So you it's buy it for a year, you way, could get a computer. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you... unless like so like a computer, you'd have to pay all that money up front. But it right. may be yeah. easier for someone to pay thirty five dollars a month. Right. versus having all of it also up it's just nice to have the game like immediately yeah so like if you uh buy a computer you have to you may have to wait for the computer to arrive mm-hmm. and then you have to fucking if like, you know how to install build it, how to do yeah. everything or right. even if you get a pre-built machine you have to like install the game figure it out mm-hmm. and yeah. even and even with consoles you have to buy the hardware you okay. have to buy the thing this is a way around that it's kind of like uh how mobile gaming was just so instant on mm-hmm. a device okay. that you already have all right. yeah i see then so the idea is that you could play uh, whatever bullshit you want to play it's a on your phone. for video games. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And that's that's kind of like one of the one of the directions that a lot of this stuff's going in. But it's kind of wild. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's wild. That's kind of cool though. Yeah. So so uh, Phil Spencer, who is the head of Microsoft right now, um, wasn't he just the head of Google Stadia? Uh, no, you're thinking Phil Harrison. Okay. Yeah. Too many Phils. Yeah. Too many Phils. <laughs> too little time. Um, but he <clears throat> made a statement that uh, he doesn't consider Sony and Nintendo their competitors going forward. They're considering right. Am- Amazon. Amazon and Google, uh, Google yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. So it kind of, you know, they clearly see the future is going mm-hmm. towards cloud. I think the future will be cloud. That being <clears throat> said, I'm an old fool geek. 
I, you know, I, I'm going, I, I like uh, collecting physical items. I like and collecting. And we yeah. literally mm-hmm. work for a company and our slogan is forever physical. Like our <laughs> yeah. whole job revolves around taking games that are digital only so ha- and making opinions. them, <laughs> and making them physical. Yeah. Our livelihoods preserve, have opinions. Yeah. Here. To yeah. preserve uh, those games that you could potentially lose. In the, in well, the cloud or and, the internet or whatever. You and know? that's that's one of the things about <clears throat> like this potential future that we're moving towards is, um, one, now you have to worry about rights. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, theoretically, uh, because I do a lot of PC gaming, I purchase and download a lot through Steam. Mm-hmm. But now all of the different companies are fracturing and they're yep. building their own launchers. Mm-hmm. and Just like how Netflix has a million streaming people. Uh, Stream people going against them now. Yeah, yeah. And so, in order to get all the shows you want, you got to get all. These it's turning services. into right. another cable almost. Yeah, it's which almost. I worry about that with <clears throat> gaming. Yeah, which yeah. Always, honestly, it's kind of always been that way. There's always been like the four, three or four tiers of like where you you're gaming at, whether it's like console, handheld, like um or uh PC or whatever. Yeah, there's always been different formats for gaming. Hell, board games. <laughs> but yeah. at the same time, I understand the the allure of not having all of your games in physical form because you don't have fucking room for them. Well, that's how I <laughs> that's how I feel about music at this point. I don't, yeah, all of our music, music is, is completely digital, digital to me now. Well, yeah. except have, for all of our fucking vinyls. Well, which yeah, are but, a pain in the ass every time we move. Of <laughs> like maybe 150 pounds worth of but vinyls. I've, I mean, and but and, and I've had how much music I listen to though. Yeah. I've had occurrences where my uh, hard drive is shit the bed, and You've then I just don't have that everything. music anymore. Yeah. Um. So it's like I I think there is a duality between owning and having direct access to it mm-hmm. versus not having to worry about it, not having to move those big boxes mm-hmm. of discs or whatnot. Mm-hmm. We um, thought about going minimalist one time. We sold a lot of stuff mm-hmm. one time in that process. Yeah, I even thought about it, like, uh, most of, like, our stuff comes from books. Like, I have so many books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I tried same. reading, uh, like, on Kindles and stuff, but it's not the same. Yeah. And I just have a lot of trouble, like, looking at the screen. Um, yeah. It keeps, like, sometimes I'll read a book to kind of, like, settle down for the night and not look at a screen. Right. Uh, so looking at a screen, even with, like, all those <laughs> different modes you can do with the blue light and stuff, turn that off, it still isn't the same. Right. Yeah. It's something about... Physically holding a book and looking at tactile paper. experience, yeah, yeah. That I'm just like I can't get rid of my books. Like I have be, to keep them. I've been getting a lot more art books lately, mm-hmm. and like especially with those, like some pages are a lot more glossier. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's that you know the feel of the page is part of the art. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. display as well. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you. Like you know, I'm I, I hoard a lot of uh, physical media as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we we see with um like different you know developers or publishers that go under like Telltale recently like yeah some of their like they, they said for if you own minecraft you know you have to download these episodes because even if you own the have license to the game you won't be able to download them yeah yep. now right. they um they fixed that recently. they fixed that yeah they've been saved and whatnot, so uh you know not everyone wants but to have a bailout maybe. because like hey ducktales like right now that's off of all the digital platforms mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you can't download the most it famous one the one it. that we deal with at work the most is scott pilgrim versus the world mm-hmm uh, and that is a game that has five legal p- properties that are, de- are right. we're dealing with at the moment. And it was only available on Xbox 360 and PS3 mm-hmm. as a downloadable game. And you can't even download it anymore. Right. Yeah. So, so like, every single day we have people ask us if we're going to do that game. Oh, my God. Like, literally, the bio in our Twitter is, like, zero days since someone's asked about Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> Which is an amazing game, but... Um, yeah, it's just, like, we're but, probably never going to get that game because well, it's just, like... Five, like you said, five people own well, it. It's really hard to get ownership or the, the rights. legal. The legal it's, aspect of it is insane. Yeah. And one of them is Ubisoft, <clears throat> who's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and my understanding, so like, there's part of me wonders if all of this streaming cloud-based bullshit comes out of like one lawyer who's like, yes, let's make mm-hmm. intellectual property laws mm-hmm. much more complicated so yeah. that no one can fucking do anything ever. Mm. Yeah. Because um, yeah. in the <clears throat> end, like a lot of these moves are made with money behind them. You yeah. know, like the ultimate goal is people want to make. Well, and, and the ultimate goal that, that they're saying is like, oh, we just want to build a platform that people can use and be excited about and develop a relationship mm-hmm. with. And, um, I guess we're moving into a world where 
hardware, like physical boxes, don't have that. Yeah. You know, that worries well, me a bit, but I get it. I'm waiting for us to all just get the ports installed in the back of our necks. Like and then we can just jack in with whatever experience we want. Yeah. Uh, we won't have to like do anything anymore. Like if you want to go on a trip, Google it. <laughs> Man, so we actually we were at a uh, museum. We were at an art museum. We were seeing at MC an... Escher exhibit. Yeah. Right? yeah. And we were like looking at this really amazing like drawing or and they, illustration. Well, they have like a paragraph on the wall. It's like about you know the artist. Mm-hmm. And then people, it was very crowded because it was the last weekend that they were showing it at the museum. And everyone was like huddled around reading this giant paragraph, but it was like stopping traffic. Like t- people yeah. had to kind of like meander through. And this person behind us got really pissed because people were stopping and reading this paragraph. And they were like, oh, why is everyone stopping? You can just Google it. And so me and Brittany wow. and we were like, of that person. why bother going <laughs> so out much. anywhere and doing yeah. or seeing anything? Because you can just Google it. <laughs> We're like, I'm sorry that you're pissed that people paid money for this ticket to see this amazing art in person, and they're yeah. reading about the descriptions of the things. I legitimately and wonder upset about it. what search <laughs> that person thinks is going to return that paragraph. I, yeah. I don't know because it's something that the museum made. Like, yeah, they've curated the, that. Yeah, it's part of the exibit. Like, and you're not going to get and that. And there was experiences else. there that you couldn't get. Yeah, right. And there's so. a big difference between seeing a piece of artwork and a book or in a, on the computer versus real life like there's a big difference oh in that. Uh, yeah i mean we went that's those are some good pixels <laughs> yeah we went to the same uh not the same exhibit but to the same museum recently to go see the frida Kahlo and diego mm. mexican Riviera. art uh, yeah. exhibit that they had and um one of the things that really surprised me about that was that not only did they have all the art and whatnot but they actually had like clothing that she would have huh. wore at the time yeah. they Interesting. were they were explaining the culture surrounding her art yeah. along with yeah the like the itself. reasoning why she they made were the art, creating you know? an experience yeah. that people could yeah and it was awesome <laughs> engage with and <laughs> draw a closer connection but one to. of our inside jokes is like every time we see something amazing we're like oh just google it you know like <laughs> there's no reason to go experience just it when you can google it google sunrise <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that being said uh, along those lines, kind of like the PlayStation 9 trailer where all the like nanobots flew yeah. this person's brain and they experienced shit. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the, um, when I first got the HTC Vive, um, like years ago, mm-hmm. um, one of the things they let me do is they had, um, they had 3D scoped out like this area on Mars that you could walk around in. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, wait a minute. Did I just Google myself to Mars? Yeah. Did I? Because it was like very recently after that conversation we had, I was like, wait a minute. Maybe that person's right. No. I remember (laughs) being a kid though, and like when Google Maps first came out and you could do the satellite view and it would put you on like street view and you would go to like the pyramids or whatever and like look around and that was really awesome. I still do that. But I can't imagine that replacing a real experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and part of. The thing that I've been thinking about, because I also have an HTC Vive, and they're not taking off. No. Like, and so part of the what- The is doing pretty good, though, but that's a whole yeah. other conversation. Part of what led to computers getting adopted and gaming becoming a thing was uh, computers becoming cheap enough that office workers could mm-hmm. shift over to them, and became they became functional enough. So yeah. most of the people that I- know that are nerds have the story of like playing uh age of empires on their parents computer yep. or uh sim city or something um so i think part of that is like that leap needs to happen for vr that which needs to happen is for and what still also needs to happen for like our main subject here like streaming games yeah i don't think we're there yet yeah um, um we're, we're not at a place where it's cheap enough and reasonable enough for people to adopt it um, and uh, also infrastructure is a huge issue. Too, yeah. like, infrastructure. Yeah. Well, I mean, there uh, bandwidth internet and... access is a real problem yeah. in America, and especially if you want rural communities to like enjoy this. Mm-hmm. Nobody gives a fuck about rural communities. Well, though. the people <laughs> making <laughs> this stuff should, definitely though, doesn't. because that makes up like most of the country. That's the Walmart yeah. money, man. Yeah. Exactly, mm-hmm. and that's that was one of the things that I was thinking about along with this is when the Xbox one came out mm-hmm. and it was using the online digital, only online only digital drm all that stuff and then uh all of a sudden everyone at xbox remembered 
oh shit, active duty service people mm -hmm. are some of our largest market. They have a lot of disposable income and they might not be in a place that has internet. So I've always denied this, but that was when the Xbox one got announced. That was my first taste of like coastal elitism being real. Yeah. Um, and like the two coasts, uh, really do not give a shit about anyone in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> well, it's easy to forget about right. people out there. It's yeah. easy for me to forget about people like living in the city. We live in the capital of the state and like, it's easy to forget about like places where we grew up Yeah, yeah. where mm. it's like, eh, you're in the woods. Like I had dial up in 2009. <laughs> yeah i remember that i was yeah. astounded when i found yeah that out and that. that's just the way it was and no one really batted an eye about it it was like inconvenient but we also were like whatever yeah. you know we did other things which is crazy i've seen how they have fiber though they probably did my family was probably like we're not paying for that <laughs> yeah. Use the oh, yeah. dial up. <laughs> and if someone needs to make a phone call you no, need to get off <laughs> i imagine that necessary infrastructure had that but like it didn't trickle down to yeah Britney's family. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, like, it's a recent thing. It is a pretty recent yeah. thing. Yeah. They, yeah. they have not, broadband not back now. Yeah, yeah. We, they, my family has fast internet They have basic-ass broadband, but... Uh, and they pay out the ass for it, too. Yeah. yeah. It's very basic. But, yeah, um, you know, and that I think that's the majority of the country. And for us who are in these areas, these little pockets, it's easy to just forget that most people live in the back, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Which is strange, because now with, like, way phones are coming... Like, that's becoming the fastest access point for a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if, like, the, 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 the idea of, like, uh, Streamlink or, like, Google Stadia going through their phone, that's yeah. a smart move. Yeah. Well, and I, I think that, like, the Steam Link, mm -hmm. that's, that's the one that I, I think is the most interesting. And, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it has, <coughs> like, an associated heavy charge. No, and then Google Stadia actually, if you want to, they have proprietary like controllers, um, controllers yeah. that work with it too. So that and they even now work with iPhones as well, not just Android. Yeah. So it's a start. I think it's. <coughs> I think we should still keep attempting. Yeah. I don't think it's going to ever supersede in our lifetimes. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, physical hardware. Right. But I do think eventually we'll get to that point. I don't know. I think we're going to get very close to it. If not completely like like we were worried about we, we thought that it might actually happen next generation. Uh -huh. But people voted with you know their dollars that they really wanted this space. Like I do think oh, I do think physical media is going to exist in one format or another, whether it's disc, whether it's like cartridge, whether it's SD card, whatever, what have you. But I don't know if um we'll ever be OK with not, not owning things. Now we've gotten that you way should, about music though, you, so I could be completely wrong. When you wrong. put this episode out, you should make a little straw poll, and I want—I'm curious about our viewers. Like, how yeah. many of you own? Like, how many of you have switched over to digital only, and how many of you still own yeah. like a lot of physical we media? You like have a, like a preference. You put like a fully digital, partial, <clears throat> physical. Yeah, only. or how many of you just maybe cut down on some of your collection and yeah. kept like, you know, only yeah. your favorites as physical. We'll put this out there because I tried to go. I'm just curious. Full digital. Um, a while back, mm -hmm. and I feel weird about it. Yeah. Like now, I'm sliding back towards owning things. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, even if it's in a digitized format that I have a backup of. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it depends. For me, like, uh, I'm really, really uh, old school when it comes to gaming. I prefer like the early '90s consoles still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me. Physical is not a problem because they're they're but like it was all physical. At right. the same time, you own pretty much you own like EverDrives for almost all of your retro. That being said, too. yes, I do also make digital <laughs> uh, uh, copies of everything. Yeah, but uh, most of those games, the games that I want, the games that um, I want to have physically, I do have. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> but yeah, that's just one of those things. That's just one of those things. And I think, honestly, yeah, we'll do the poll, and maybe we'll come back to this subject at another time. Yeah. yeah. Well, bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Want to see us perform live? Use that big brand of yours and follow us on Twitch. We do things live there sometimes. Hey, everybody. It's Brittany Saturn, and I'm here to ask everyone, what is the best prank you've ever pulled off? Um, so I could get into legal trouble about that. <laughs> like, well, don't. I'll start while you think about it. Yeah, okay. Um, yourself. Not long ago, I was at a party 
with my lady friend and we convinced a person that memes were pronounced may mays. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Was it like an older person no. or a younger he person? He was younger than me. Oh, and like, he was like uh I would say like late twenties. <laughs> um but it was such an effective prank <laughs> that he had an existential crisis. That is amazing. <laughs> and I went inside to get another frosty cold bev and he or he had to command himself. <laughs> he was he was just like talking to people like I always thought it was pronounced memes, but they said it was pronounced. Maybe. Was everyone in the party like, yeah, it's me, mate? No, they were just like, uh, we don't care. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we even literally do not That's care. Even better. Yeah. That is yeah. better. That is better. They're like, what? what is this? What is this conversation? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I will say that like, I've had a lot of prank ideas in my life, mm. which I may go over if we have time. Do you have a list? But uh, no, I don't have a list. Well, in my head, but <laughs> 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 everything in my brain is just organized as lists. <laughs> Um, but the best prank I probably pulled off was in high school and it was a big group effort when we were seniors, um, for our senior prank, uh, we camped out in the school lobby. Like we brought tents and set up mm. in the lobby and slept there overnight. And in the morning when the freshmen, like, I don't know why the freshmen get there early, but they do. <laughs> uh, we told them that school was closed and they all were like, okay. And they like turned around and like walked out <laughs> and like a shit ton of freshmen didn't come to class because we convinced them all that school was canceled and did you have to break in to do this or um, was the we, front door just unlocked well the front door was unlocked oh. <laughs> classic <laughs> and, mistake well we did actually get it approved with like the principal you filed the paperwork yeah because we had to have a chaperone stay with us mm. overnight um and it was like one of the kids who stayed overnight it was his mom who worked at the school who stayed with us okay but <laughs> we like played hide and seek and stuff in the school which was a lot of fun, you know, as a kid. You're like, I'm somewhere I'm not supposed to be at the wrong time. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> like those, kind of like those like Sunday school lock-ins or whatnot. Yeah. yeah, well, I don't know about that. You don't know about that. I don't know about Sunday that. school lock I bet uh, the lock. I want to be weird. locked in a church for <laughs> like a night. I, I almost was. I went to one and then <laughs> I, I left before I they left. locked themselves in. So I was like, I have one, guys. I'm out. I'm just like, nope. <laughs> so the fucking Sunday school lock-ins were awesome. I can't tell you how many like girls I fingered All and right. made out with. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Thank you. Jesus. I just Hallelujah. go to church to fuck, and that's it. Was like, this in the Padres church? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, cause he was uh the Catholic Church didn't have uh lock ins. Uh, and we're I like, was that's Baptist fucking weird. Time. <laughs> I was Baptist at the time and I was at a, a Baptist church and th- there was a lot of girls who they knew what they that's came what for. That's what you go to church for. Fucking No, seriously. <laughs> I don't get like if you went to church and you were of age but barely, there's like, a lot of, of- like like eighteen plus uh, of legal age or of biblical le- legal age. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, we're gonna just move on. <laughs> Sorry, Hutch, do you have do you have any? Look, I I can't think of anything. Big. I can't imagine a Hutch All right, prank. well, think of something that I like I, 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 something I, that you wanted to do. I mean, you... oh, this is how you're leading into your head list. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things I I did before was I got like a piece of coal like at school one year and so um like I, at christmas time i put it in my brother's stocking the night before <laughs> yeah nice 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 that's some wholesome shit yeah. that's some yeah. wholesome yeah. shit right there um, that's why we keep you around you're wholesome as fuck you know that right yeah well um uh, this is so mean-spirited like it's more mean than a prank i guess but like i used to tell my brother that he did as a kid, <laughs> and, then he, and then he told me like um like a few years back like, he looks like i actually believe that <laughs> i was like oh <laughs> no i get that he, he looks so different sometimes sometimes yeah so i get sometimes it Sometimes a different lighting <laughs> he takes on more of my dad's features than yeah, i do yeah. more of my mom's yeah okay so i'll go ahead and tell you mine um uh, back in uh high school me and my friends would get together every weekend either at one person's house or another and do like land parties and one time we were doing Halo Land Party, 16 player, near downtown of my town. Yeah. And <laughs> oh, I know this one. This is a good one. And we were just hanging out. And then one of the uh, kids that lived in that house was like, here's seven pounds of detergent. Oh, yeah. And I was just like, <sighs> okay, well, why do you have seven pounds of detergent? And he was just like, tomorrow it's going to be a fun day. And I was just like, okay. He's like, you know the Veterans Fountain? And I was like, oh, oh. 
oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> so we like threw out a map of our town, mm-hmm. right? And we all got put on like black ski masks. Yeah, gotta, of course. You've got to make it a heist. <laughs> and Which is like way more. I had like... music prepared for this. That was that was also right around the time Fight Club came out. Oh, yeah. So I imagine there was the a lot of big we fl- call, Fight Club We legitimately energy. called yeah. it Project Mayhem. Oh, yeah, gross. Yeah, Great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, okay. It was, that, it was a different time period, y'all. It was a different time. <laughs> a different time. I was the teenage boy. I'm a, I was the oldest one there. <laughs> I'm imagining you with a Kevin McAllister like, map of like the city. <laughs> no, it was like that. It was like that. So we put he's, he's communicating into his talk boy. <laughs> we had we had we had radios. And we actually sent one of the guys down. There's like a team of ten people here. Sent a guy out there to go scout. Mm. And then we sent another scout next to it. By the way, this is right next to the police department. Yeah. It's also downtown. So I was like... trying to not say the name of the town, but oh, okay. Just bleep it out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't want I know it's been like fucking uh, twenty years. Fine. What's what's the statute of limitations on? It's like seven years. Foamy. Right well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Anyways, so what we do is we get a bunch of people to go out there and just like scout and whatnot. Mm-hmm. We put a person in my driver's side seat of my truck, uh, to just do the pouring. I'm the driver, and then there's um the wheel man, <laughs> and I was also <laughs> blocking view of the fountain with mm-hmm. my truck. So we. Wind up down uh, down there. I ha- I literally have Metal Gear Solid music playing in my truck. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> and we're just doing that. We're so fucking obvious. Yeah, but no you're one's wearing there. fucking ski mask. Yeah. <laughs> like, I obviously you're I'm up dri- to no good. I'm driving, so I was what time fine. of year was this? It was the it's summer. Fall. Right? It's the fall. Oh, okay. It's the fall. It's still not ski mask weather. No, it's not ski mask weather. <laughs> um, did you all go out to Walmart and buy ski masks yes. that night? Yeah, we did. Great. <laughs> so we dump all seven pounds of the detergent mm-hmm. into the fountain, which is not on right now. Yeah. It goes. It comes on at 6 a.m. We knew exactly what time it went on because we just happened to know. What we didn't know is we, we left. They all jumped in my truck. We ran up out of hell. And we played like Alice Cooper's like I'm a bat 18. out of hell. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we go back, we play Halo, we get fat on chips and whatnot. We have a good old merry time. Chippy fats. And we kind of forgot about it. And but uh the two boys that live there are morning boys. So they got up <laughs> and it's like seven AM. Roosters of the group. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they wake everyone up and it's seven AM. Mm-hmm. So we just it happily been walk going down for there. Like an hour so here's the point. thing. It was actually <laughs> days. In town, there's a fucking parade going on. A, oh, a parade! Might want to bleep that too. And yeah, <laughs> and the soap had expanded from the fountain. <laughs> it was an eight foot tall wall of bubbles that was about a thirty foot radius <laughs> out going the out out into the road into out where into Main the bands and whatnot were marching through the bubbles. <laughs> Because they didn't they, know what else to didn't do. Didn't they think, though, that it was, like, a plot to oh, yeah. stop the parade? Yeah. And they had just forgotten that the parade was happening. Like, <laughs> but people of the town were like, someone tried to stop the parade. There was we like, can't let this there happen. There was, like, articles in the newspaper. We have to fight our way through this. Yeah. <laughs> they set up cameras around the yeah, fountain. Yeah, now there's cameras that. around that fountain if you go there and, to this day. <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. And we were just fucking around <laughs> that's hilarious no that was my best one. prank that's a good prank it's a top tier prank uh, a little prank we did uh when you and i first started dating um mm. we went to the drive-in movies and you could get like really cheap hot dogs so we had like a leftover one and there was this guy that brian knew that he didn't like so we wrote fuck you with lipstick on the hot dog bun <laughs> and then I put it in his mailbox and it was like the weekend of a holiday so there was no mail on Monday so the hot dog sat in his mailbox all weekend long in the hot sun because it was like Memorial Day still, or something. I don't I don't know if this counts as a prank or just like generalized malicious actions. Um, when I was in high school we had a like week long New Year's party mm-hmm. um, which generated a lot of trash Mm -hmm. and me like we'd bag up all the trash and then this one guy who was a pizza delivery driver we just ride around the next morning after every night 
uh, and throw this trash into the yards of people who didn't tip him well. <laughs> I love it. Mm. I get it. I get it. Like, yeah. I get the sentiment. I would never do that. But it was like 16-year-old you know. ass shit. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, I think everything that's been talked about so far has been before I was a 20-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that we thought about doing in college, um, so I was in the graphic design, so we had a cart of like MacBook Airs that people would check out to do their work on. And uh, of course, the professor was super like protective of the MacBook Airs, which makes sense because they were very expensive. And right. These are some shit that, that people are like Covet. essentially like using. But she was like so anal about it to the point of like if you were drawing with a pencil and you erased, she would get pissed because a little like eraser pieces might, might get, get sucked up into the laptop. Like you couldn't even like you even have your laptop only on air your table. Blows out. Yeah, yeah. So she was very protective of her, and we always talked about how it would be really funny if we could get like a shell of one of those MacBook Airs, like <laughs> that wasn't a real computer but like a display or something, right. and just put like fucking spaghetti on the keyboard and just like <laughs> eat off the keyboard and be like what and like just fuck with her. <laughs> Uh, we, I forgot about this. We looked into it, and I couldn't find a place to get like a shell that looks mm-hmm. like uh, the same and was cheap or free or whatever. <laughs> um, but that was something we always talked about doing because she would probably have had a stroke because she was so protective <laughs> of these computers, and we just wanted to put like something ridiculous just straight yeah. on the keyboard yeah. and be like, whatever, it's spaghetti. <laughs> that's pretty. That's, that's pretty great. Nice week, palm sweaty. Stain on my laptop, bunch of spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything that you guys thought about doing that you didn't quite, you weren't able to do? I'm trying to think about some past <clears throat> uh, pranks that I've done, but most the problem is, is like I I don't have too many inhibitions. Yeah. So I've done most of the You've ones I want to do, and like they're usually pretty bad. They're not. Yeah. They're not, I, I, I feel like most of one. my pranks were in. Oh, I've got one. It's not mine, but I was a part of it. Okay. And you were you were a witness. Magstock. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, oh. Magstock yeah. <laughs> has uh Magstock is a really cool huh. camping trip. It's the music and gaming festivals camping trip <laughs> every summer where crimes happen. Yeah. Where, and Just there's a big lake. <laughs> there's people get, doing a lot of drugs and listening to music and partying and eating food. It's Devil's a great time. Stuff. Yeah, you know, mm. there's a lot of devils led us around. Um. There's also these big ass floating pieces of like climbing things out in the lake. Like an obstacle course in the lake. Yeah. And one of our friends decided to bring five gallons of horse lube. <laughs> horse lube. It's like veterinarian lube. Oh, okay. We, we kept. I didn't know if lube. it was like specifically lube for horses. Like we've got to grease these <laughs> yeah, horses it's up so they run. Extremely specific. It's like veterinarian so, lube. We would just like soak it up and like. It, it was onto in the powder thing. form, though. But we had yeah. a, we put water. It's wa- water soluble. Yeah. So <clears throat> we put it on there, and like it would wash away eventually and whatnot. But it, <laughs> it would, would be real slippery. But while everyone was trying to climb this thing, we would shoot lube on it. They would just fall flat. <laughs> it was under. put in water guns. You should probably explain. Well, like, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. Like, we would shoot like, lube. On it there. wasn't like a lube <laughs> trebuchet. <laughs> <laughs> a lube catapult. Just put the big barrel in it. Launch just launch it. So this is what <laughs> killed happened, four though. people. Well, While this, we were having fun, fun with the game. bucket, we were having fun with the bucket with those things like sucked up a bunch of yeah. water and shoot it all at once. Mm-hmm. That's what we were using. Yeah, to shoot it up onto the climbing thing. Well, we got caught, and they were like, we were trying to get rid of the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so you drank this, a bunch of lube. We God, we have this giant five gallon bucket, bucket of lube. Gallon bucket of lube. And we we're like, all right, toss it over. So we thought we were going to dump it over the thing. Unfortunately, there was like this like eight year old kid swimming right by our boat. <laughs> it wasn't. They weren't swimming either. It was a mother and her eight year old kid in a canoe. Yeah, and who were not part of uh, the mag stock. <laughs> they yeah. were separate and also camping out, trying to have a nice wholesome time. <laughs> and we dumped the entire bucket on this eight year old kid. Plastered. <laughs> <laughs> they got plastered with the loop. And, and oh man, like I got hit with the water gun of it, and it's like. Sticky, like it, like go, like there's huge like, there's, strings it's of like it. Like rings of lube. Oh. Yeah, it's like it's thick. Yeah, it's like it's alien cold. slime. Uh-huh. The kid had to go underwater to wash it off so he could breathe. Holy shit! <laughs> like it was bad, but yeah, 
that that's a that's a general Tanner prank right there. Yeah. So we're all nightmare humans. And By the way, the Tanner worst. was involved with both of those pranks. I brought. Of course, he, of course yeah. he was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's the one that bought was. the seven pounds of detergent. He, 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 <laughs> Good old oh, Tanner. I love Good it, old Tanner. I've always wanted to give someone an upper decker. <laughs> oh, Tanner's done Tanner that. Tanner did that at <laughs> yeah. Mag as well. He does that every Mag. Yeah. Just have you ever given someone an upper decker with a, the carcass of a chicken? No. Well, we have. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the grossest. Oh, yeah. We do have a friend's house that we decimate every Christmas. They throw a Christmas party. And we would go, like, Tanner started it, like, he would fuck up things in their house. Like, he would, like, lock himself in their bathroom and then climb out the window. And so, like, the bathroom would be locked and he would, like, steal their shower head. So it was just, like, a fucking pipe. And the water would just blah, 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 come out. And he would hide their shower head. And so Tanner started doing stuff like that. So we all started doing stuff like that. And then Tanner would get blamed for it. Um, like, I drew, like, they had Christmas cards on the refrigerator and I drew dicks with a Sharpie, like, behind each Christmas. Christmas card. They would find the later when they took the Christmas cards down. Then they had some like decorative pots on their <laughs> kitchen counter, and I poured like marinara sauce and all the like pots. Great. And we were also drunk and like ah. Um, but the best prank was when uh they had a really old microwave that was about to die, and like we all knew it was about to die. And Tanner put a single baby <laughs> carrot on a plate and put nine nine ninety nine. <laughs> And just walked away. <laughs> and we all were sitting in the living room. Get about to take to, a group photo. We were about to take a group photo. And there's like smoke comes out of the <laughs> kitchen. And the two, the couple who owned the house ran into the kitchen. And we all were sitting in the living room like, what just happened? Because only Tanner knew about this. And we could hear them fighting in the room because they opened it up. The carrot had just exploded and was just like stuck. There was no carrot. It was, was like no just carrot. a black spot stuck to the top of the microwave and the bottom of the plate. And the the husband, he like just put the plate under cold water for some reason and it cracked the plate in half. Oh, no. And the wife was super pissed because that was like apparently some family heirloom plate or whatever. Part of some set from her grandma or something like that. And it and they we could just hear them like fighting in the other room, <laughs> and we're all sitting in the room, the living room, like very quiet. And this this new couple who it was their first year at one of these parties was like, "Should we leave?" <laughs> we're like, "No, nah, this happens every year. It's fine." <laughs> and uh, Tanner ended up buying them a brand new microwave. But the next year they did not have. They skipped, the they Christmas skipped party the a next Christmas year. party the next year because they were like, "No, not not again." So yeah. Oh, we had to cool it on the pranks with them because... Oh, they also started having children. Yeah, so. <laughs> and they like started adopting children and because they were adopting, it was very important that their house, you know, because they... Was a safe space. Not yeah. be on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... So we were like, okay, we have to cool it on the pranks, but it was a really good couple of years. <laughs> Just there weren't, there weren't any friends. pranks this past year, were there? We didn't go this past year. We didn't go this past oh. year. <laughs> okay, then the thing I went through with you guys... Oh, that's the, oh that's the Thanksgiving. That's Friendsgiving. Oh, yeah, okay. well, this Friendsgiving. is a Christmas party at uh at Jonathan's house. Yeah, what we're talking. Yeah, about. okay. Yeah, yeah. I um we, we watched um uh uh what was it uh, Christmas Vacation? Yeah, so it made yeah. me think of that. Yeah. No, we have a good time. The the Friendsgiving party that we go to is extremely wholesome. Yeah. Like it's pretty it's pretty chill. Uh, it, for, also, it's at Tanner's house. So except mm-hmm. for we were you were riding around in a wheelchair. Oh, I was doing wheelies. Because <laughs> Tanner is a physical therapist, so he has a lot of medical equipment in his house. So we were like, pull out the medical equipment. Let's have some fun. <laughs> yep. Crutch fight. <laughs> that happens. Wheelchair yeah. one night, moving a tub the next morning. Oh, that sucks. Oh, yeah. I still have a scar from uh, moving my tub. Yeah. Rough. Well, well that, that... yeah, I think that wraps up like the best prank we've ever pulled off. So... Let us know in the comments what prank you pulled off. Or we definitely want to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to know. Or give us some ideas for future pranks because yeah. my, my relationship with Tanner's not over yet, and I want to I want to get there sooner rather than later. You want to end the relationship with sooner Tanner? rather than oh, later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get him before he gets me. Mutually assured prank destruction. That's right. Mm. Do you want to watch Heat Wave before anyone else? Well, there's an easy way to do that. Just back us up on Patreon at patreon.com slash half empty tank and be the first to watch the episodes. So guys, let's talk about anime. 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 Is that the same thing as Japanimation? Yes. Okay. 100%. Uh, tsunami? What's the difference between Japanime and hentai? <laughs> um, Boobies. 
big un, un, you un, get, you, get boobies. you get to see a nipple in one not the other so is nipple. akira hentai yes uh, okay that's my favorite actually <laughs> oh, God, that, you know everyone's got different strokes but that's that that one's wild different strokes, <laughs> different strokes for that different is not strokes. an anime though no. no it's not okay <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. the I uh, can't wait for the Different mm. Strokes anime. With... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have any real structure here. You're just, just anime. Wait, talk about anime. anime. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I, you, you said what's your favorite <laughs> anime or, like, what's uh, on the thing? Oh, wait, yeah, anime we love or whatever. Yeah, yeah. What's so anime, anime love? we love or whatever. <laughs> I just you're wanna... really bad about uh, the, you're keeping up with your titles, you know. Yeah. I, I love you to death, but you're always like, <laughs> you're like, hey, you know what? I just want to talk about stuff without like a go and go. I don't know. Yeah, I'm terrible at that. Then lead the conversation. I'm. You I'm, can. I was what I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I just want to talk about what I've been watching. I've been watching Fruits Basket. You guys are the new one. So. Or the, re- oh, the upcoming, is there a there's an upcoming remake of it. I wasn't sure if it was out or not. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, I've been watching on on Funimation, so I don't. I oh, does it look so older? We now? watched. Nope. Then it's the new one. Oh, oh, okay. okay, we watched. Um, I guess the older one. It was back like in 2011, uh-huh. 2012, something like that. We watched like a part of it, and I really enjoyed it. And then we just stopped watching it for some reason. But it wasn't because we didn't like it. I don't know. It just kind of fell the- off. The new one is doing the crystal route, and it's th- like extremely close to the manga and no fluff. Mm-hmm. I have no clue what Fruit Baskets is, but I've heard so, about it a lot. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give life. you a, a quick synopsis. It's like one of the old school ones, right? Mm-hmm. I, I guess so. I, yeah. I didn't realize that myself, um, but uh, it follows a uh, girl who uh, is uh, she's lost both her parents. She comes across um, these... Uh, uh, it's a, a, cla- a classmate, and um, she is taken in by him, and uh, you know his his classmate's family um, is are they they are also like the reincarnations of um, different uh, Chinese zodiac animals. So, so it sounded like really wholesome slice of lifey, <laughs> and then you're like, oh, and also they're yeah. reincarnated. So here's so, the magical aspect. Yeah. 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 So when they get hugged by a member of the opposite sex, they transform. So it's like okay, um, and uh, so I haven't watched all the episodes. I think about twenty in, and I think there's twenty five that are um mm. uh, done right now. Uh, but it it alludes to um potential more sinister like, <gasps> yeah, it it's definitely very slice of life, but it definitely delves into like you know some deep shit like in these characters' past, and it's mm-hmm. really intriguing. I'm really enjoying it. So slice of life anime is my favorite. Anime. I'm, okay. I'm just going to put that out there. Same. So I'm excited that I didn't know the Fruits Basket remake was out. And um, I'm excited to watch it because of that. Um, the other one, the only reason why I think we ended on the other one was just because it had so much fluff in it. And I like usually fluffy anime, mm-hmm. like just whatever mm-hmm. nonsensical like episodes. But that one just had so much. Yeah. And it was going nowhere for like the whole season. <laughs> so... Uh, I don't really remember. It's been a while. We I were watching had 35 it. Hot Springs episodes. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love a great filler episode, yeah. but. Well, if you want to talk about an anime that I love that has lots of fluff, we can talk about Sailor Moon because that is 200 episodes. <laughs> mm-hmm. We have been watching Sailor Moon lately. We're watching yeah. season four right now. Yeah, we're in the middle of And it, four. it is. It, of Crystal? No, <coughs> of no. the original, but oh, um, okay. because of Crystal. Uh, the same company who who dubbed it Viz Media, they took the original and they redubbed it with uh, so the same voice crystal. So like all the same voice actors mm-hmm. are in there, and it is the closest uh, dub to the original Japanese version. Okay. Yeah, so in no the nineties, they uh, they the first two seasons were dubbed by a company called Veek, mm-hmm. and their job was to get this Japanese anime prepped for American audiences. And their idea was uh, American audiences don't want uh, anything Japanese in this Japanese cartoon. So let's try to cut all of that out and make it as westernized as possible. Interesting. So they even reversed like um, people driving on the like roads and stuff. Yeah. Like they reversed the footage to make them drive on like the American the side. Um Man, that's a huge, weird and, mistake. Yeah, and they cut out as much of, like, the Japanese signage. Like, if they're walking down a, a street with, like, 
signs that are in Japanese, they try to cut that out as much as possible. Mm. And they did a lot of weird where, like, um, the characters aren't talking, but the dub was like, that's weird. They can't just be standing there not talking. So let's put some, like, weird extra voice work over it, which doesn't make sense. Let's just make the characters make noises and stuff, you know? And it was just really weird, their huh. their uh, direction they went in. Yeah. Uh, and then they there were some episodes that they didn't even dub at all. So they just left out. The entire fifth season. It was, um, well, there was even episodes like scattered throughout the seasons that maybe didn't have as much to do with the plot. It was more of like a filler. Okay. Uh, but they just never dubbed it. So it never came to America. Yeah. So <clears> this <throat> new Viz dub, they they are doing all the episodes and it's as close as possible. Uh, and even like the dub, like the original dub changed their name. Mm. Like the main character, her name is Usagi, but in the instead of calling her Usagi, they called her Serena, mm. and they just changed everyone's names. And it was really confusing to me as a kid to go back and forth between the the, the sub and the dub. Yeah. Um. So I'm very excited that they're doing it justice. I feel like, okay. and the last season, they never never came to America at all because it had a lot to do with um. So Sailor Moon messes around a lot with gender roles. Yeah. And the last season, there's these three warriors who are female, but they're disguised as male in okay. their like non super superhero form. They're just right. like these male idol singer singers. And I don't think they knew how to market that <laughs> to children. <laughs> uh, they weren't to comfortable with. in the '90s with that, so they just completely like took that out. Then, yeah. <clears throat> then they have um, <clears throat> Sailor uh, uh, Saturn and Uranus's cousins. Or uh, Sailor Neptune and Sailor Universe. Uh, yeah, yeah, so they're lesbian Cousin. lovers. And to fix that, they were like, they're cousins. They're, they're really close, close cousins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that they're was just really good friends. That was way weirder than just being like <laughs> yeah. they're in a romantic relationship because it's not over the top, you know? Yeah. It's just mm-hmm. like sometimes they hold hands and they get really close to kissing, but they're not quite kissing. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, they're cousins. Don't you do that with your cousin? Don't you hold their <laughs> hand and get really close to their face? And Never. Like, gaze into their eyes nope and it's like that's way weirder than if it was just like <laughs> their like girlfriend and girlfriend you know I, I, I will say the <laughs> new dub of sailor moon is the absolute best version of any sailor mm-hmm. moon mm-hmm. the uh season four used to be my one of my least favorite seasons and we're watching through season four right now on the new dub and it has become my absolute favorite Mm-hmm. They've completely it's retransformed so the whole fucking thing. Fucking silly! Like I just love it. It's just so silly and like yeah. fun to watch. It's like every good filler episode. That's every episode. Yeah, if mm-hmm. you're watching it for like for a serious story, you're not gonna get that. Yeah, but if you're watching it for like fun, like think of the Dragon Ball Z episode where they go and get their license. It's like every <laughs> fucking. It's like every fucking episode is like over the top like that. And it's yeah. just really funny. Well, it's <laughs> it's interesting to compare that. So one of my favorite animes of all time is cowboy bebop yeah and like the canonical version of cowboy bebop is actually the american <clears throat> dub yeah isn't that weird um because like i i guess the japanese voice actor that they got to do spike didn't nail the tone the way that they wanted but like cowboy bebop is one of the few animes where it's like this dub is the official version it's or like this is the version that everybody actually wants. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not one of those where like nobody goes like, oh, I only like the southern <clears throat> version. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. the, 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 there's very few instances where the dub is all is the it, right. the preferred version. Um, that being said, I I generally prefer dub in yeah. general because I don't want to. Uh, I, I want to. I'm usually dub? doing three things at once. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Cowboy Bebop was the beginning of people actually appreciating dub at all. Yeah. Well, it was also when voice acting started to become more prevalent, more mm-hmm. more important. Mm-hmm. Um, Cowboy Bebop is an amazing anime anyway. It's too, my, on top it's, of that. Yeah, I, it's I still great. need to watch it. I D- bought it. So I, not, I know. Not, not just in tone, but just in style. Yeah. Like that, that, that anime oozes style. Yeah. yeah. And it's so great. Like great I soundtrack by Yoko Kano. Just really... Phenomenal art, really um, good. So I have I have rights. two different periods of anime. Yeah, I have anime when I graduated from high school, and anime recently that I enjoy. Yeah, and there was like this dark period where I didn't really watch anime, <laughs> and I just kind of got out of the loop, and I was just like, well, yeah. I guess I'm too uh not too old for this, but I had other concerns. Thankfully, Brittany time. came into your life. <laughs> Actually, 
And I was like, let's go outside. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go outside let's or go stay the, inside and watch hentai. Let's go to the park. We or... got a story about that, too, actually. Because I, I took you to your first anime convention. Yeah, that's true. And um, that was a whole other thing. But so my favorite ones from when I first started watching anime are, of course, like Dragon Ball Z, mm-hmm. uh, Trigun, Cowboy mm-hmm. Bebop. Uh, I watched a lot of those more like male centric, crazy animes and whatnot. Yeah. But the second time I got into like more slice of life. Yeah. My favorite anime of all time is Azumanga Dayo. Azumanga Dayo is 26 episodes of about a bunch of schoolgirls becoming their themselves mm. and just realizing that. If there's a lot of silliness and whatnot, but there's there's a tiny touch of just like magical stuff but you it's also like played off as like this is just like their this was a dream or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. it's not like realistic uh, unrealistic you know mm-hmm. right <clears throat> but it just follows these girls as their path through high school there's not much of a of a, a, a character plot, really. arc or anything like that it's yeah. kind of like every day is like oh uh we're having like uh uh like Build a track day or sports yeah, yeah, day or yeah. whatever. <laughs> so this is the thing they're doing today. There's or... a the 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 main thing is that you see people who don't know each other become friends, build their friendship, and that you can tell that that's a at the end of the series. Oh, these just these people are now lifelong friends. That sounds like some wholesome shit. It's yeah. really amazing. And like at first, it doesn't feel like wholesome shit. Mm. It feels like almost like American cartoony almost. Yeah, but it just adds and adds and adds, and it just became like. One of my favorite things. Um, but the other anime that is my favorite was from my prior experiences. That is the Rurouni Kenshin OVAs. Mm. Which I've are never s- watched that. So I don't much care for the series. Yeah. And I don't much <clears throat> care for the movie Samurai X. Okay. But there's two OVAs. There's one before he committed to... Uh, Kenshin is about a samurai who has a reverse blade because he is committed to not killing people. The first OVA is why he's committed to that. Yeah. He does not have a reverse blade. Yeah. The other OVA is after the series, and it is him. <laughs> you have a friend that looks Hello, like Venus. <laughs> and the other series is the end of his life. And both of them are very serious. There's not much fun, but they're beautiful. They're just amazing movies. Yeah. And I just, uh, if. They're probably like my more serious animes that I prefer. And I go back and forth between like the ultra serious, no fun, but beautiful storytelling mm. to slapdash, wholesome, I could watch this every day kind of like popcorn anime. Yeah. That's generally the two areas I span. I've, I've become more of a fan of slice of lifey shit. Um, I historically, that wasn't what I looked for out of an anime okay um i wanted uh spaceships or giant robots yeah i wanted cool still love from big o i got really yeah. into that big o was i i was more gundam wing than big o see i've always wanted to try i've, I've never yeah. sat down and committed to watching gundam, <laughs> well, <Try> gundam wing. <laughs> but my my thing with gundam wing was that i i don't think I've ever successfully watched it in order. Yeah, me neither. I've um, seen episodes. I just remember like Toonami. Mm-hmm. Oh, this episode's on. Oh, that's cool and interesting. Man, that guy sure is whiny. <laughs> um, <laughs> and sounds I, like anime. I kind of had the same problem with Big O, where it required more thinky and more understanding of where the story was and what was going on you couldn't watch it like anime uh, 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 uh you couldn't watch it like american animation where a uh, one show was all complete right one episode right so i yeah i never got traction with big o but i like the art it's super pretty for me i got that was my probably my first tsunami show that wasn't dvd that i kept up with. Mm. <clears throat> i got um so i saw an article about um uh, an anime called unahara um and it it is a uh, it's a very serious uh little slice of life sort of uh it deals with loss so mm-hmm. it deals with um uh the passing of um uh, there, there's this group of friends one of uh, the girls in the group passes mm-hmm. um and then um uh, a few years later uh one of the uh, guys in the group sees her ghost so her her you know, spirit is still like in this world yeah um and then it goes through and it deals with all the um 
<clears throat> it follows every other member of the group since her passing and how they're dealing with you know the, their loss and they're all dealing with it in various ways some of them well most of them not very well i thought it was, it's really touching and it's a really good uh huh. moving uh i definitely recommend it i you're gonna it, have to, i had me bawling like you're gonna at have the to send end. that to me that sounds, yeah, pretty, that good. sounds yeah. really good yeah um and uh, real quick i want to also mention like how much i love that anime is being uh shown in theater u.s yeah. theaters yeah. now um like i just watched um recently uh weathering with you which is the um it's not a follow-up but the um the, the next movie director that made your name mm-hmm. it's uh you know, his next work uh i really enjoyed that um uh, the next uh, My Hero Academia movie is coming out. I believe this I've month. been keeping up. That's the newest anime I've been keeping up with because I'm really bad about shonen style. Are you caught yeah. up with it? Uh, I'm not caught up with the show. I'm caught up into. I haven't watched any of the most recent. Oh, okay, it's really good. Uh, the thing that I've been watching and enjoying is Demon Slayer. So I've been meaning to see classic. that. That that is something that kind of started me down the anime road. Are you talking? Wait De- a no, thinking- no, you're thinking of yeah. Um, Demon Slayer is a new one. Yeah. Oh, then never mind. You're thinking of Demon Hunter. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Demon Slayer is just fucking beautiful, and it's. I don't know what this is. Then. I need to catch up on the newer stuff. I feel mm. like I'm behind. <coughs> um. We had a time where we caught up on some newer stuff. Yeah. yeah. We we kind of like binge watched, and uh, we were going back and forth, taking turns. Mm. Like I'm gonna take out the next watch. Yeah. Uh, and we were able to get through. Uh. A couple of our favorites. Dragon Maid. Dragon Maid. Uh, that was Wolf, really good. Wolf's Rain we mm-hmm. watched, which was really depressing, but really good. Mm-hmm. Watch it maybe like once. <laughs> um, And try like be in a happy mood when you watch it because it's going to bring you down. It is the most depressing <laughs> anime I've Don't ever watched. Don't watch it if you're already depressed. Because we try to out-depress each other. She uh, introduced <laughs> Wolf's Rain to me, and yeah. I introduced her to Neon Genesis of Evangelion. Which was one of my favorites, and I didn't think it was that depressing. Well, it Wolf's wasn't Rain. compared to Wolf's Rain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Kaijo was a really fun one. Kaijo was amazing. That's the butt one. Yeah, the butt fighting. Oh yeah. One. yeah. They try to push. push they try to. Push, I love where you were going. They try there. to push each other off of these like floating uh platforms, like in a pool, mm-hmm. and they can only use their boobs or butts to push each other off. And it's super like sexy. I'm gonna use this technique, and it's like their butt cheeks are like. Bah, 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 it becomes. Bah, 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 bah. Like, it's super stupid. It becomes the best sports <laughs> anime I've ever seen. Really, with the exception of Yuri on Ice. Yuri on Ice. Yeah. Yuri on Ice was amazing. At first, we were like, I don't know if I like, like this. Yeah, the first three and episodes. Like a couple episodes in, we were like, I don't know, and then it got good. We were like, okay, I'm in. I'm well, into this. Now. It, it was never bad. It was just more like I don't know was, if I care about this character. Well, yet. we I think we felt like it moved really slow because we had just got got finished watching Kaijo. Kaijo. Kaijo went real fast, and then we watched Yuri on Ice, mm. which was slower paced. And then we were like, okay, this is good. Mm. So. Um, I <laughs> this is something that we're going to talk about down the road for another segment for me. But the reason why I watched all of those shows though was because of the in, uh, the song intro was became my favorite song at the time. I so, so mm-hmm. we watched Dragon Maid because the in, song intro popped up on Facebook and I was like, "What the fuck is this anime? I need to watch it now." Yeah. It is such a great song. Uh and some older stuff I just love is Tenchi Moyo. Okay. And I oh, love yeah. the goofy ass dub of that one. <laughs> like it's like like Tenchi has like the most terrible voice uh in the dub, but I kind of love it. That's like Part of it, yeah. That's like part of it. Uh, it took me a while to get into that because that same reason it took me a while. But to it get has into a Evangelion. banging uh, intro and outro song. Yeah, Moyo. yeah. I fucking love. We'll talk about that later. Though. The outro. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's some really great fucking anime intros. Yeah. I wanted to throw out Food Wars. That we we started we, watching yeah, the, uh, Wars, yeah. the 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 one scene where beat the juice. <laughs> yeah, everyone has food and then like oh. <laughs> Then so, hentai's out. There, there is there is a uh, character um, who, uh, if he likes a dish, um, like, like it really impresses him. It causes uh, him to lose all of his clothes, and then everyone around him to lose their clothes. <laughs> so That's it's amazing. like it's like that sort of ridiculous. Like secondhand nudity. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 such an over the top. Total uh, spaghetti thing. hands and chef's kiss. <laughs> yes. So uh, that's and, I think that's my favorite thing about anime is that it's so fucking bizarre sometimes, and it allows like some creativity that you just aren't able to see anywhere else. Mm-hmm. I love that mindset. Yeah, 
that was that was the first thing that made me think about anime or like the the to see the potential of anime is that uh if you are there are a lot of stories that we can't tell like through film or mm-hmm. through um and specifically adult stories like so it was the first time that i saw akira was the first time that i saw a super fucking adult story told in a cartoon mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it opens a lot of doors and a lot of potential I think that's something that we have been missing as a society as part of American culture. Yeah. Is being able to have adults express themselves through color and through life in a different way that yeah. in the same way that children are able to express themselves. Right. And anime, it being a, a not in Japanese culture, animation is for everyone. Right. Um having their their work come to us i think it actually has benefited american culture in a way that we've been able to express ourselves not like those fucking video games not like them <laughs> fucking video games at all all right well guys that was a pretty that good was, one that was yeah. a good, good job yeah thank you good job to everyone good congratulations. Job, everyone. congratulations 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 no we're not doing this <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to that, right smash there. like. <laughs> that right there is now our advertisement. I'm just cut out right. the like, comment, subscribe. It's just going to be that. Damn on that bell. <laughs> <laughs> Dab on that bell. Welcome back to Heat Wave. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a new uh, segment that I want to have a recurrent segment on. It's generational gaming divides. And the one thing that I want to talk about today is general ga- uh, uh, generational gaming divide that is caused by 2D versus 3D gaming. Specifically, the transition from 16-bit to 32-bit and 64-bit. Okay. Use more words about that. So... Before, for uh, all of gaming for a long time period was 2D, mm-hmm. and that's all gaming was, and there's very little 3D gaming out there, and the primary source of that was 2D. Yeah. I'm one of those people. I think most of us were uh, old enough to grow up with 2D gaming. Yeah. Brittany's a very particular mm-hmm. barely, situation. Barely this one. was growing up with 2D. Um, but I'm, as I've gotten older, and some of these people that I have gotten to know and befriend, they started gaming with the N64, yeah. or they started gaming with the PS2, and um, they just have never played <clears throat> 2D games. Well, and there and there are other people too, because we know people who are of the age generation where the N64 should have been their first system, uh-huh. um, but have become speedrunners or mm-hmm. people who play mm-hmm. 2D games mm-hmm. out of some sort of nostalgia. Yeah, a nostalgia that wasn't theirs. Not yeah. to say that. It couldn't have been, right. but just like, for example, Brittany, you wanted to buy. Yeah, yeah so my situation was that I, um, I had people in my life who had video games, and I would play like their consoles. Yeah. So I had like my toes dipped into like the two D gaming. Yeah. Um, but when I wanted my very own console, I wanted the N sixty four, but my family couldn't afford the N sixty four like when it was out. So my mom bought me uh a, a SNES for Christmas that year. Uh, so we were basically like a generation behind. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so I grew up playing like I had like eight games for the SNES. That yeah. So like Lion King, Aladdin, Jungle Book, Scooby Doo, All Real Monsters, all Pimon the, and Pumbaa Jungle Games, and Killer Instinct. <laughs> are the games that I had. Those were the games that I had. That's the one outlier. <laughs> That's like a good lineup though. Uh, like... Killer Instinct. Only reason I had that was because it literally came with a SNES when I bought it. Oh, okay. Ah. Like it was like a bundle pack or whatever. I okay. guess I don't know why. My you got mom the soundtrack like, and everything. Yeah, it came with the soundtrack and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, Love that so soundtrack. that is what I had uh, growing up. Um, but then I immediately moved over to the N64. Mm-hmm. So most of my gaming growing up was uh 3D, except yeah. for those few games that I played on the SNES. Um, but because of that, I struggle with uh any 2D <laughs> games. Like I'm not very good at them. Yeah. I get fed up with them very quickly and I'll put them down, uh, except for those few that I've played. Uh but 3D games, I give them more of a chance. 
and I struggle mm-hmm. with them, I'll keep at it. But for some reason, two to games, I'm like, eh, whatever. I'll just stop playing it. Yeah, so. I think I think I'm kind of closer to you. Like, I don't hate two D games, but I think part of why I didn't become <laughs> Why I don't like platformers is that I don't feel the same, like, understanding of space mm-hmm. um, in a 2D platformer. Yeah, and that's something that me and you have actually had a lot of conversations about, mm-hmm. which is strange. I, I, I actually sometimes don't, I, I give you, in my head, you're older than you are. Yeah. Um, so I always forget, like, your actual age range, and you're closer to Brittany in that yeah. age range. Whereas me and Hutch, we're pretty close in age, mm-hmm. and we grew up with 2D. Right. Yeah. And uh, so we have a big, strong nostalgia for those titles. We're both big Sonic the Hedgehog fans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, and more so, like, you actually grew up with Nintendo. I just almost purely Sega. Mm-hmm. I remember the day that uh, we bought our uh, Nintendo uh, with uh, the uh, Mario and Duck Hunt uh, cart yep. from Sears at Haynes Mall. <laughs> I remember it vividly. It was a good day. It was Ooh. a great day. I got my I got my Mario and Duck Hunt pack. For Christmas uh, of the year of 1990. Oh, wowie. So, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Hutch never thought his life would end up like this. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, what I've seen, though, is that while speedrunners aside, yeah. there's a lot of people who just don't even consider 2D games an option. Like, as an, uh, uh, for example, we have good friends, Tanner and Caleb. Hey, I know Tanner. You're probably watching this episode. Um, he, Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care for 2D games. Yeah, yeah. Like at all. They they'll they'll be like, oh yeah, they'll play a stage. Be like, that was fun, and then they'll go and play mm-hmm. uh, a 3D game and yeah. spend like hundreds of hours inside of it. Uh, I will say too that like um, the difference for me in like a 3D and a 2D game is that a 2D game is very constricting. Like I can only go this one path. Mm-hmm. But um, so the first 3D games I played were like Mario 64 and Donkey Kong 64, and those were very like freedom. Yeah, so I could go wherever I wanted to. Yeah, uh, okay. and there were certain paths you had to take, but you could wander around the overworld and stuff, and yeah. it felt very free. Um, and so uh, going back to those. Uh, 3D games. Uh, I can play like an older 3D game now because it's like, okay, well, this section is really hard. I want to do it later. You know, yeah. I want to come back to it. Versus the 2D game where it's like, this section is fucking killer and you have to do it now or you're not going to progress in the game. Yeah. I get that. So, so there's some games though that were 2D games that were more like 3D games. For example, mm-hmm. like the uh, Metroid and Castlevania franchises. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of exploration yeah. involved. So you could do something along those yeah. lines. That being said, that that type of game didn't really, uh, really explode until after a 3D game. Right. Mm-hmm. There was and you like got the 3D hand... open world. Uh-huh. And it yeah. was just So, whatever. and you're comparing the two. You're like, right. well, I can go anywhere in this game. Mm-hmm. So, I kind of get where you're coming from there. It's hard. For... I understand your perspective. But for me, it just feels like I never felt that way in a 2D game. I never felt yeah. constricted. Well, this but is I just see my... how you would. This is just my personal no, no, preference I agree with where you. I'm coming from. I just, uh, it, it, it's a new perspective for me to kind of like, for me to take in because right. I've never felt that way in a 2D game. Mm-hmm. I've never felt restricted. Um, I've always felt like I had this whole world to explore, especially with like Sonic games. Sonic games have like a top, a middle, and a bottom mm-hmm. and a route usually in yeah. their stages. And to me, I was like, well, that's the exploration. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I can kind of see where you're coming from. Like, oh, I can go anywhere. It mm-hmm. feels like going anywhere. Like it does in real life. Yeah. And for me, I guess it's just more of like, hey, um, my skill level is not quite there yet. Like mm-hmm. I need more practice in this area. So for now, I can just skip that part and come back to it. Yeah. Versus yeah, yeah. like in a 2D game where it's like, no, oh, you got to figure it out right now or you're not going to get anywhere. So. That's fair. I realize, though, that I have quicker drop off with open world games. Mm-hmm. Like frequently when I'll play an open world 3D game, I'll, I'll just get to a point and be like, <sighs> I don't care about anything enough to figure out what's next. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, there's so many options in front of me. Yeah. And, like, fucking whatever. So I get that with, like, newer open world games yeah. where there's so many options that I'm, like, overwhelmed and I don't care. That yeah. was my issue with, like, Skyrim. Destiny yeah. 2 is really bad about that right now. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're a new player, even if, if you're like me and you come back after you've played, like, Midway, you have no idea what the mm-hmm. fuck your next objective is. Because there's, like, it shows you all the expansion, like, 
you know, possibilities. Yeah. And, and I'm I, just like, I don't know where to start. I, yeah. I'm currently that way right now with like Fortnite. I stopped playing for like five months and at the, the map is completely different now and all kinds of other stuff. And like, there are new mechanics that, because like, it's all, it's a different game now. Yeah. I was thinking mm-hmm. about this when I was playing uh, a mobile game a few days ago and I realized that it was a mobile game that's been around for a while. Mm-hmm. So they've had to do the thing where they're continuously releasing content to keep people hooked, to keep people engaged and all that sort of stuff. Subscription based gameplay. But so you have no fucking clue. Like there are yeah. 35 mechanics and you haven't experienced like the gradual addition of those mechanics. Mm-hmm. So you don't know what any of those fucking things do. You don't know how it works or why it does that or any of that. So that is, uh, I think that is a, more of a uh, association to our time period yeah, though, yeah, yeah. than yeah. it is between like 2D and 3D. Because there are 2D games that are like that right. now on right. mobile and 3D games that are like that. Yeah. But I get like, I think that uh, affects gaming in general. Whereas like this generational gap that I'm talking about is more of a old bogeys and this is something i think about it's like uh will v if maybe let's consider let's say vr is the next 3d yeah mm-hmm. okay there was 2d there's 3d now vr mm-hmm. will vr be the new like thing that eventually takes over and people who are old bogeys still play those 3d games on a flat screen tv so yeah. i i think that with with the explosion of indie game developers like yeah. a lot of them are building 2d games again yeah. Yeah. So I I don't think and those are very popular now. Yeah. Again. I don't mm-hmm. think VR is going to kill 3D just like I don't think 3D killed 2D. Yeah. Like those those are all ways to do things. What? No. And I think we're adding more tools that we can use to tell a story. Agreed. Uh it's less I'm less worried about the market aspect okay. than I am on the effect on people. Oh, okay. So, for example, yeah, I know 2D still exists because there's old people like us that still exist that want to play those games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The market is there. Yeah. What I mean no more is like people who are born now and VR has always been available to them. Yeah. Will they feel differently when they grow up? Like, uh, why even bother with this fucking mm-hmm. flat screen TV when I can have a uh, Oculus Quest Plus 5 or whatever? Just on your face. On your face mm-hmm. and be able to do things. Well, I'm not sure about the VR, but I can say that, like, I have siblings. Uh, my sister, who is the oldest, uh, she was born in 2002. Yeah, and then my brother was born in two thousand five, and they mm-hmm. do not have any interest in two D games. I've only okay. ever seen them play one two D game, and that was Stardew Valley. Yeah, and then that is kind of a different type of two D game because it's still kind of an open world. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, and so they don't have any interest in two D games. I actually, know? so I have a weird hold up um with specifically two D RPGs, mm-hmm. um, because when I started playing RPGs, I started with Final Fantasy seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, and okay. that that is 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 very much a 3D game, and I think I have a weird hold up on, on how stories. I mean, not, stories are presented in 2D versus 3D because mm-hmm. 3D, you, you know, obviously you can do more. I, I make these characters more in different environments. It feels more impactful than say, you know, like a sprite being you know tossed around. Or mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's no fucking just pick up. The exact same sprite, rotate it 45 degrees, <laughs> shift it back and forth, and put it down. Yeah, well, yeah, no, like, from Final Fantasy VI to Final <laughs> Fantasy VII was a huge fucking jump. Yeah. There was legitimately a man who picks up a train and fucking, uh, like, suplexes, suplexes it yeah. in Final Fantasy VI, and in Seven, it's way more realistic. Not realistic, but way more realistic. The suplexes are, are so much more impactful. that there is more emotional impact to a 3D game versus a 2D game? Yeah, I, I feel I like, think, like I think in most cases I can see that. Yeah. Um and and you know, I I played Final Fantasy 6 like I got to the the train, not quite to the suplex the train part, mm-hmm. but you know, unfortunately, you know, that's the best part. Of the uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, I, I don't know, it's just a weird thing with me. I I, I definitely want to go back and revisit those games and try and, you know, It's a, it's sometimes hard to go back to 2D games. Yeah. It's um depending on like not just like the fact that it's 2D, but like there's some outdated mechanics and some like a life convenience mechanics that right. are hard. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, I don't think it's just as neat of a bucket as 2D games versus 3D games. Mm-hmm. I think there are some 2D games that were made in the early days that are still perfectly valid, perfectly enjoyable mm-hmm. games. Mm-hmm. Um, like and... Super Metroid, in my opinion, is a perfect game. 
Yeah, and we know lots of people who believe that all of the Mega Mans are that. Yeah, and they're they're, they're some, not, but yes, there's, there's people <laughs> that feel that way. But you know, those I think it comes down to the relationship between the game and whether or not it's a game that you can build a relationship with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really like Goldeneye, mm-hmm. but going back and playing Goldeneye. It's fucking rough. Early 3D is hard. Yeah. Early 3D early, is especially early hard. Early 3D, and part of us remembers the pain and, and enjoys it because of that, mm-hmm. but, you know, really you could ask, do you want to play a twin-stick first-person shooter, or do you want to play a single-stick first-person shooter? Um, it's, a, it's a similar question. Yeah. Like, they're worlds apart. Mm-hmm. and It's a big, huge difference. Yeah, like yeah. for me, I didn't enjoy first person shooters until twin stick shooters. Yeah, like I tried. Yeah, yeah, it's like that weird gap where it's becoming that weird half, like where it's half to be, half to be. Yeah, and the perspectives are all fucked up. Yeah. Like what comes to mind for me is the original Crash Bandicoot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that was like a half 3D, half 2D game. Right. Uh, and be, and some of the 3D stuff, like the perspective is all fucked. Up. Like stuff mm-hmm. looks further. Than it is like yeah. you think like I'm gonna make this I'm gonna jump and I'm not gonna make it and yeah. then you mm-hmm. do and it's like oh this kind of makes me sick and Crash <laughs> had weird perspectives partly <laughs> to cover up the console's limitations of 3D hardware yeah. because yeah. they it was the first time they did shit yeah so that's why Crash Two in a lot of people's minds is a better game mm-hmm. because it they they learned how to make games for that console yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. so it, perspective wise it was a lot easier but. I know you and even particularly when, have And a, even when they did the remaster of it, they tried to fix it, yeah. but there's still some weird shit going yeah. on with it. And the hitbox is a little different than the original. Mm. Uh, and I think, like, the reason why everyone says the new one is so much harder is because, A, they never played the original, so right. that it is a harder game. Like, that's yeah. Crash Bandicoot's a fucking hard game. And, B, if you were used to the original, uh, the hitbox is slightly different. So if you're playing it like you used to, it's... Mm you're not going to make your jump. So it makes literally no one happy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, I've been playing the crap out of it. I'm trying to 100% it, get all the gyms. Yeah. And um, uh, I, it's probably one of my favorite okay. like remaster games. They did a good job with it. Yeah. I well, think they did a really good job. But it was <laughs> like the Dark Souls of uh, 2D uh, 3D I don't agree platform. with that. Though. I don't think so, but a lot of people were saying that. I don't agree with that because I think that the newer version is easier than the old version because yeah. they give you a lot of leeway. The old one, like, in order to get a gym, you had to complete, you had to hit all of the boxes and you couldn't die. Now they have it to where if you're getting just the white gym, which is the common one, you can die as long as you get all the boxes. Like, if you hit the checkpoint, it saves all the boxes you hit before. The old one, you couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. You had to get every single one perfect. And they they do that with the, the colored gems, which are the harder ones. Now you do have to go through like the original, but there's a lot of shit. And then they cheesed a bunch of stuff too where you're fighting bosses. You can stand on ledges out of the boss's reach. Where in the original game, like there was no place to cheese it. You couldn't stand on this little yeah. ledge. Um, so I, I disagree. I think the new one is easier. That's fair. Yeah. I think Part of what it comes down to is like the design heuristics of modern gameplay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Games are supposed to feel a certain way. You know, you're supposed to have a a specific interaction model. Mm -hmm. And your brother and sister, it might be that they don't like Mario because when you press right, it feels weird Mm -hmm. or like sluggish or something. Or like the longer you hold down the button, the higher you jump. Well, that was the case with uh, Majora's Mask. Um, yeah. Like, <clears> or <throat> not Majora's Mask. What was the one where they, they were like, you have to you have to run? It was Majora's Mask. Okay, yeah. So, like, my, uh, my brother was, like, not pushing on the joy because he was playing on the N64. Right. And he's not used to holding the N64 controller, and he wasn't pushing down on the joystick hard enough. Yeah. And it was making Link, Is this like, another walk. time to show the picture of him holding yeah, it bad? Can, yeah. <laughs> so, he was, like, not pushing it down so you know like in the original zelda link like jumps automatically if you get near a ledge if you're going fast enough but because he wasn't going fast enough link would just kind of like fall off the ledge or would just like do that thing where he'd fall and grab on yeah. instead of doing a jump and i'm like you need to push harder on the controller right. like you're not going to break it just push on it really hard right and my brother was like ah, ah, i hate this <laughs> <laughs> so that that was a fun time yeah um, I do think there is a generational gap between these two. Yeah. But, uh, and of course, it's a blurry line. There's yeah. not like a, this is when it happened. Although, I think 
it has Fucking the most video game millennials. <laughs> yeah, I think it does have the most definitive line because 2D yeah. and 3D was a generation like Super Nintendo, Genesis, and then PlayStation and 64 and Saturn were 2D then 3D yeah. consoles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I I think there's kind of another one which is um the moment that the world shifts from entirely different shaped controllers yes. to the Xbox PlayStation controllers, which are kind of staying in the same 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 yeah same they're, general design. They're differently shaped to within er- small ergonomic. margins. Yeah, their ergonomics are different. Yeah. But it's still four button mm-hmm. in like a little and, diamond. And then Nintendo's like two on the back. Hey, what if you have two in your hand. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Good old Nintendo always fucking things up the best way possible. What if you made a fucking piano out of a cardboard box? <laughs> <laughs> and it cost you $60. <laughs> Thanks, Jim Tendo. Sign me up. <laughs> oh, man. I, I legitimately am so glad that Nintendo exists. Yeah. Of shit like that. Nintendo's just like, fuck you guys. Well, because it's like the other companies are just trying to distill everything down to the most profitable format. Mm-hmm. And Nintendo's like, hey, let's make a DIY cardboard kit <laughs> for punching robots. Let's see if that works. <laughs> ah, people bought it, huh? And like, Weird. And they're like, oh, here's a fucking hula hoop. And in order to move in the game, you have to run in place, fatty and joy. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you can't find that anywhere. It no. is hard Par- to find. Really? It's on Amazon, though. No, it's not. Oh, did it sell out recently? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so it's in my cart. There, there, there are. Well, it's probably sitting there for like a hundred and twenty dollars. Apparently, uh-huh. the Target next to my house has like three in stock. So I'm gonna pick one up when I'm going by there. Pick up two and I'll pay you back. Pick right. up all three and sell them on. For I mean, you're not <laughs> wrong. She's not wrong. Sell it on eBay for a gajillion gr- <laughs> dollars. I'm. Yeah. Well, and with that, <laughs> all right. A we've got a drill. heist. We've got a grift. And we've got a gym tendo. We'll, we'll see you. We'll see you next week when we're one hundred and twenty dollars uh, more rich. <laughs> Hasta Luigi. Bye bye. Bye.